One of the things God has been teaching me is how to deal with difficult people because in all honesty, you will always find people who are hard to talk to, hard to live with, hard to, um, you know, just be friends with, hard to work with. And this year, God has been teaching me how to learn <laughs> how to deal with them and i wanted to share with you guys a few pointers of the things um god has taught me in my walk of faith and you know just adulting in christ and um in terms of grace in all honesty we need a lot of grace to deal with people because people will always be people people will disappoint us people are going to make us feel some type of way people are going to hurt us people are going to do things and you'll be like what are these people doing but the reality is we need to get to a place of understanding that you know what? People are people and they are God people, you know? All of these people that we don't like, they are honestly children of God and there's nothing we can do about it. And Jesus loves them this, the same way he loves us. So let me just get into it. God has been teaching me to use the lens that Christ uses to look at me, to look at them. So one thing I've been praying about is telling God, please help me see these people the way you see them. Because in all honesty, sometimes you feel like you've got no grace to deal with anyone. But the Lord has really been working on me and, you know, just working in me also and telling me, you know what, anytime you see someone doing something you don't agree with and you feel some type of way, please remember, as you're looking at them the way you're looking at them, I am looking at them as my child. According to what the word says, you know, love your neighbor as you love yourself. Literally, look at your neighbor the way you look at yourself and the way you'd want people to look at you. So just learning to use the lens of Christ instead of using the lens of my personal sight, of which it's very limited, um, has gone a long way. So, you know, we're still learning. Come on. You know, sometimes I feel like I want to snap, but I bless the Lord. You know, he's teaching me because this journey of salvation, you never get to the end. You learn, you learn, you learn. Every day, you keep on learning. So something else the Lord has taught me is applying the same grace that has been accorded to me. You know, a lot of times when it comes, especially to this thing of forgiveness and moving on from, you know, holding grudges and being mad at someone, we tend to struggle with that one. But then again, anytime we go to God, we want him to accord us the grace and forgiveness because of our iniquities. But then again, we forget. We don't want to accord the same grace to those who've hurt us. And I say this, forgiveness is not for the person who's hurt you, but forgiveness is for you. I, I believe even for me to walk in freedom, I had to let go of a lot of um, people I was carrying and a lot of unforgiveness I was harboring. And I came to understand that me being um, unforgiving brought a lot of resentment and bitterness in my life. Because I was re reacting and responding from a place of anger and a place of, you know, why did you? But then I was punishing even the people who did not hurt me. So just learning to let go and accord the same grace that God accords to us. Just forgiving those who've hurt us and, you know, just saying, you know what? It is all good. Whether you apologize or you never apologize, it is all good. I choose to let you go because I don't want to keep on holding on to that anger and bitterness and resentment. So just learning to accord people grace, even when they don't deserve it. Come on, Jesus accords us grace each and every day, even when we don't deserve it. That's why we are able to go back to him at any given time, regardless of what we've done. So it's a beautiful thing. It's hard, but it's possible with the help of the Holy Spirit, of course, and the word of God. Something else in regards to how I deal with difficult people, I think um, having wisdom to know where your boundaries are at, are at, because sometimes we can choose, like I said, to forgive and to let go, but that doesn't mean I'm going to tolerate your behavior or I'm going to take part in whatever nonsense you're doing. So just being able to um, get to a place of understanding, um, you know what? Yeah, I'm according you the grace. And uh, if I don't need to, I won't take part in it. Just for the sake of your own sanity. Because if all the time you allow these people into your space, then uh, you're giving them an opportunity to maybe do you wrong again or to, you know, come wrong at you. Like if they need you, be there. But then again, have wisdom in how you deal with them. You know, they're manipulators, they're narcissists, and they're, they're just so many different kinds of people out here. They're users and, you know, just be careful. Be smart in how you move with them and how you accommodate them. So just because I forgive you doesn't mean I need to have you in my space. I can love you from a distance and pray for you from a distance, but you have to apply wisdom in how you deal with them and ask the Holy Spirit to give you wisdom on how to deal with, you know, the difficult people in your life or your family. Stand your ground i think that's also very important and i believe 
if you don't want to do something, don't do it because you have been coerced to do it. And I also believe um, when it comes to some things which people are doing because that's how they've been doing things, sometimes God will use one person to bring the family out of, you know, strongholds and cycles. But then again, people might need some change in their lives but then again if they don't want to do the work there's nothing more that you can do so you can love difficult people by understanding that you can stand your ground and uh, you if you're done with whatever it has been and you want things to be different stand your ground and do things differently whoever wants to um do, you know to embark on the journey as well they need to be able to do their part so you are not jesus you can't save everyone you can't save even the difficult people but you can love them and treat them the way Jesus would want you to treat them. But stand your ground. Be solid in what you're doing because in the end, you're going to answer for you and what you knew. You know, um, it's said that, you know, with knowledge comes responsibility. So when you know better, you need to do better. <laughs> you know, initially I used, I, I used to think uh, I could go about changing people, but um, there's this time I had a moment and I was questioning God and saying, why are people not really willing to change? Even when I do speaking engagements, I was like, why are people so resistant to, you know, they know they should be doing things differently and they acknowledge that, but they're not willing to do the work. And the Lord was like, you're trying to do the work of Jesus. You're trying to be Jesus in their lives. The only thing you can do is lead by example. The only thing you can do is do what you know to be right because you've been given revelation in the word. But then again, you cannot save anyone. You cannot change anyone. Your work is to speak what I've sent you to speak, but allow the Lord to do what he needs to do because the Holy Spirit has the power to convict you from within you, to give you understanding of, you know, the things you're doing wrong and how, why you should change and how you can change. But I cannot do that for anyone. The same way I cannot do the work of, you know, um, breaking free from cycles and patterns for anyone. Everyone has to do their own work and to diligently seek the Lord. Like I cannot, I can inspire you to seek God I can help you understand how God works through, you know, my experience and also the knowledge I've acquired in my pursuit for God. But then again, I cannot make your salvation work. I can't give you salvation that you must do alone. That's why we are told to seek key first the kingdom of God. Everything else will be added unto you. And I say this, um, salvation is a very personal thing. It's a personal journey. So uh, no one can do it for you. You can be inspired by other people's stories. But then you need to have an encounter and a, a personal experience for you to know Jesus in a way that will make sense to you because our lives are different and how we are, it's very different and how we understand things is different. But the Lord makes it possible for all of us to experience him in a personal way. So I think, you know, as you're dealing with difficult people, understand you're not Jesus, you can't save everyone, you can't change people unless they want to change. But, you know, love them, pray for them. Um, set some boundaries and just understand, you know, they're also children of God. So look at them with the lens of Christ other than the lens of <laughs> your personal vendetta. But yes, so um, I hope that inspires you as we get into 2024. <laughs> I hope you'll be able to, uh, you know, love difficult people and deal with them differently. But otherwise, God bless you. I'll see you guys in the next uh, video. Thank you for watching.